right, so I just got to one of the rental houses and the reason I'm here today is one of the messages I got last night at 10.30 at night. Two of the tenants had problems with getting hot water. <clears throat> so we had massive flooding throughout the Piedmont here in North Carolina over the past few days. And this house has a cellar at the bottom and it will flood. If it floods over a foot, there's a trigger on the water heater that cuts the water heater off. So I get a picture from the tenants. There's over a foot of water in the cellar under the house. So the sump pump was not working. Um, you have to kind of hit it, hit the PVC pipe to get it to work. So last night they did that. The water was gone by this morning, but there's still no hot water. So I'm here to check it out and see what's going on and hopefully get this water heater working. But the important part and the reason I'm sharing it is because this happens when you have houses sometimes. Water heaters can go out, there can be leaks, all types of stuff. And you either have to have someone that can get to it, but if you have time and you can get to it, that always saves you money. I'm at least going to look at it first and see if I can't see what the heck's going on. So we're gonna go down in the basement here. Okay, so you can see where the water was. And then there's the sump pump. You've got your furnace, breaker box. All right, here's the water heater. So you can see if the water reaches that level, it'll cut the uh, water heater off. So looks like you got some leaking there. Uh, it almost might be time for this to get replaced. Looks like there's some leaking. So I, I see something going on here. There should not be water at the top of this. Like how did the water, how did the water get there? So that's a problem. Uh, inside here's your thermostat. So that probably got wet and you got the breaker box. I don't hear any humming. So I don't think this is working. The breaker's on. If it's leaking, that's the problem. So let me mess around with this for a second. We got the old water heater removed. Now it's time to carry the new one down. So I'm back at home now. Um, we did replace the water heater finally. What ended up happening is we drained all the water out of the old water heater. We took it out of the cellar. Then we put the new one down into the cellar. And when we were lifting it up, so we were lifting the water heater to put it in place we ended up hitting one of the pipes and it broke so all the water from the house just started gushing on roy which was kind of funny but then we had to mad dash because we didn't know where the cutoff valve was to cut the water off to the house we had to go to the street and turn off the main valve so water wasn't going to the house anymore then we had a low trip to get new piping, fixed it, and now the hot water heater's finally working. And it was kind of a pain. We were literally at the last step when the pipe uh, was torn off. But had that not happened, it would have been a nice and easy process. But this is just a point that when tenants have issues and they don't have hot water, you gotta fix it no matter what or they're not going to be happy. So that was just uh, a life in the day of a landlord. That's sometimes the things you gotta deal with. Unexpected things can happen. It might cost you a little bit more money. Uh, devices break and you gotta replace them. It's just part of the job, part of the business. So hopefully you learned something. This has been quite the experience. So hopefully I'll be sharing more with you later from the rentals and you can learn 
and uh, get tips and tricks on how to do real estate. So I'll see you in the next video.